Hi, I'm Bobby Dietz, and in this video, we're going to be talking about chargebacks. What are they? How to prevent them? Should you be worried if you start seeing chargebacks come in? And what can you do to make sure that your account stays in good standing if you do get some chargebacks? Specifically for companies offering some sort of subscription, if it's SaaS or if it's a consumer good that gets delivered monthly or every three months, you're going to, from time to time, get chargebacks. Now, if you start getting a lot of chargebacks, it's an issue, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But for now, just as a overarching theme, let it be understood that you should not be overly concerned about getting a few chargebacks. As long as you are at half of 1% or 1% or less, you are good to go. Ideally, you're gonna stay really well below that, but it's gonna be hard at scale with continuity billing to do that. Uh, this video sparked because a client of ours got a chargeback and was really concerned about their mids and ended up discovering that they had two different ways of charging their customers. They had their straight sale one-time buy processing uh, done through one merchant account and they had all their continuity monthly billing done through another uh, merchant account. And one reason that that might be something to consider changing is the overall customer satisfaction ratio is based on your total number of transactions. There's a lot of things that go into it, refunds, chargebacks, but ultimately that, that division is based on all transactions. So you wanna have your straight sale low risk transactions, the ones that people see a product, they buy the product and relationship is over, all those are very low risk transactions. The continuity billing is what's referred, well, often referred to as high risk merchant processing and is much more likely because it's much more likely to get chargebacks because you've stored someone's credit card information and you're going to hit them again um, every single month. Uh, MasterCard recently just made a big change saying that you have got to get permission before you charge their card again. So a lot of merchants are going away from allowing MasterCard uh, as a continuity billing. But the point is that there's a difference between a high risk and low risk uh, transaction, but if you have all of them in one merchant account or you blend them across several merchant accounts, you're going to get your overall ratio, uh, or I guess I should say the percentage of chargebacks to transactions lower because you dilute the continuity billing with all your other transactions that are straight sale or low risk. That's the way you wanna structure it so that you aren't gonna to have to worry about a few chargebacks here and there. Now, when I say blending transactions across multiple merchant accounts, I'm, uh, I'm not talking about multiple EIN numbers and LLCs. See, what's illegal is taking all the continuity billing from one merchant account attached to one LLC and moving all those transactions to another LLC and uh, essentially committing what is called, in my understanding, transaction laundering. The reason merchants will launder transactions is because of the continuity billing. It's so important. If you have 5,000 customers that you're billing every single month, and for some reason, 10 of your customers decide that they're gonna charge back every month for the last six months, you just got 60 chargebacks, and that could screw your chargeback ratio, your customer satisfaction ratio, and get your mid shut down and get you on the match list potentially, which essentially would make it impossible for you to ever get a mid again. Now, what you need to keep in mind is in order to protect this precious continuity that, these, that some merchants have, they will move all of the billing for, from one merchant account to another and essentially on the back end just change the mid and then bill customers again even though their merchant account may get or is now shut down otherwise if they don't move all those transactions to a new merchant account in a new ein and a new llc they're just gonna poof have it all be gone now is that fair to a customer that they should continue to get billed by this shady retailer or business Absolutely not. That's why it's illegal. The, the purpose is to shut down uh, shady people in the industry. And that's the reason that MasterCard made that change. So you have to get permission from people. You can't just hit their card. It's a very good change. It's important to bring up transaction laundering so that you respect 
your merchant account and you respect the continuity and you respect the customers because if you're not taking care of the people and you're uh, not using the proper disclosures or giving refunds when you should, then people are going to charge back more and more and you're going to lose your mid. And the most important thing in your business is your merchant account, your merchant ID, your mid. And if you're not taking care of it, you're going to lose it. And what we really want to do is make sure that you, you are armed with weapons to protect your merchant account, okay? So let's start talking about some of those. There's two main companies out there to help prevent chargebacks. And what they do is essentially alert you that you've got a chargeback. And there are white label service providers that can offer you Verify and Ethica at uh, very reasonable prices. And they're actually, using a white label provider or a white list provider is actually the same price if you go direct to Verify and Ethica. I checked it out, I tried to go direct. The only time you're gonna get a break is if we're talking about like tens of thousands of chargebacks every month. So just use a white list provider and they'll refund everybody for you. But the way it works is you hire one of these companies and when you bill somebody and they decide they're gonna charge back that transaction, it goes towards the bank and before it hits the bank and they're identified because it's a it's an actually a process you have to file the dispute and then the dispute gets reviewed and filed as a chargeback so in the process there these verified ethica providers will identify it as a chargeback and advise you and then you can take that and refund it so that by the time it hits the bank they've already been refunded so the bank says that's not a chargeback it's already been refunded and taken care of throw it out and you get no chargeback. Now this isn't that cool from the business owner standpoint because you still get hit with $30 fee, whatever it might be. You still get hit with uh, refund, loss of product, all those service fees that come along with it, but you didn't get that chargeback. And ultimately, again, the most important thing is maintaining your continuity, maintaining your merchant account, and uh, ultimately keeping your account in good standing. So it's okay, yes, just take your money back. I didn't get a chargeback, I'm good to go. Now at scale, if you're running a high risk business, you're gonna have a lot of these uh, alerts and you're gonna get double dipped. They only catch 15, there's like a 15% error ratio, so some are still gonna go through. It's not like no chargebacks are gonna come. It's not a bulletproof process, but it is very valuable for anybody who's in it. And typically there's no monthly fee, it's just pay per, so why not, right? It's only gonna help your, uh, your customer satisfaction ratio. So I recommend exploring one of those. Uh, there's some links in the description below if you're looking for a specific referral of people I've used in the past, if you're not gonna go direct to Verify or Ethica. If you're running a consumer packaged good, the one of the best ways to prevent chargebacks like immediately is just to refund people right away. So for example, if, if people have to mail the product back to you and then once you've received it back, you issue the refund, uh, that's like days and days. I mean, how long is it gonna take people to actually get to the post office and get this thing in the mail and then the post office probably ground shipping can take you five days, maybe it's seven over the weekend. Who knows, it can be a long time. Now we're talking about 10 days, maybe even 12 before they have a chance to get their money back. Now, if you're a customer or a consumer and uh, you want your money back, what are you gonna do? Are you actually gonna go to post office and mail it back? Are you just gonna file a charge back because you don't really know that it's punitive to the retailer? Maybe chances are you just file a charge back. So instead, I mean, something we've done with clients in the past is ask them to refund right away so the customer's like done with the situation. They, you know, they go to charge back. Oh, well, you've already been refunded. You can't charge this back. Oh, okay, great. Sometimes, the, the, depending on the bank, they'll allow the charge back to go through and you do have to watch out for that because you've now double dipped. Like the customer's actually made money. Okay, that's not good. So you have to identify that, watch your chargebacks very closely. But ultimately, if you're looking to improve your chargebacks right away, just refund immediately, and then people are gonna chill way, way down. Talking a little bit about how to fight chargebacks, it's an art, and there are a ton of different companies out there that will fight chargebacks for you. They have actually made businesses out of this. And for a lot of merchant processors out there, this is actually a profit center. You know, they get charged $15 and they mark it up to merchants at 25, 30, 30, 40, $50 sometimes per chargeback. So it's an interesting is industry with a lot of different moving parts. And one of the best skills you can develop as an owner of the business is fighting these things, um, creating different templates. There's different reasons for all the different chargebacks and all you have to do is create a template reply for all the different reasons that someone might charge back. Product wasn't up to snuff, 
um, didn't actually receive the product, not what they said it was going to be. I mean, there's all these different reasons as to why people are charging back. And when they file the dispute, they choose that reason. So make sure you look at the reason when you're fighting the charge back. And let's say it was somebody that says they never received the product, okay? This happens all the time. It'll be like the fourth delivery of a consumer good, and they say, I never got the product. In a situation like this, it's really important that you have the tracking numbers attached to every order. So this way, as an example, if this is, again, the fourth order for this person, you can say, okay, well, we delivered it successfully all four times, and the first three times went to the same address as the fourth, which you just charged back. So nothing's changed. All deliveries previous have been successful, and now you're just saying that you didn't, you didn't order the product or you didn't receive the product, but nothing's changed. So you definitely received it and you're just trying to get out of paying for something that you did actually receive. You give us money and we give you the product. That's the way it's supposed to go. And that's what you need to say when you fight this chargeback. So you have an opportunity when you dispute chargebacks to present your case, as it were. So you need to include email notifications that you know were given to customers before they were gonna get paid. Hey, we're gonna bill you in five days. You sure you want us to? You still like the product? Hey, we're gonna bill you tomorrow, just making sure you're aware so the customer was advised. And then giving them shipping notifications and confirmations uh, so that people know that the orders are on their way, giving them, making sure that you have tracking numbers, any kind of email correspondence given back and forth. If you told the customer, hey, I'm sorry you're not happy with the product, let us give you a 25% discount, which I don't recommend doing in email, but in this situation, if you did do that in writing, include it in the chargeback because you did everything you could to satisfy the customer. If you record your customer service conversations, include the transcript, why not? As long as you're doing everything you can to satisfy the customer and you have obeyed your terms and conditions according to your checkout page, then there's no reason at all that you should lose the transaction. And that's what you need to keep coming back to is your terms and conditions. The customer had 30 days to, refund, to get a refund and a full refund if all they have to do is call us and they'll get that. All they have to do is mail it back to us and they'll get that. And if you can show that you've given them every opportunity to do that and reminded them of your terms and conditions and ways to get refunds and made it your number easily accessible, then there's no reason you shouldn't win a chargeback representment. See, it's just about proving that you obeyed the rules and they are just trying to take advantage of you as the poor retailer. Now, that's just about winning the chargeback and getting your money back from that customer's bank account. But that doesn't change the fact that you still got the chargeback. See, something that's not common knowledge, I guess, in the industry is that if somebody files a dispute against your company and you represent that to them, it does not matter if you win or lose that chargeback. It is still on your record. You have that chargeback registered. They do not care if you made a good case as to why you should win or don't. I mean, they don't care at all. The customer was unhappy, you got a chargeback, and it's a ding on your record. That's all they care about. And it is something you have to pay close attention to because if one customer decides that they want to charge back all the last six months, which is the limit. You can't charge back further than six months. If they decide they want to charge all those transactions back for the last six months, they can do it. Be careful, be heads up, follow your chargebacks, make sure that you try and mitigate some of the losses the best you can, and you should end up keeping your merchant account in good standing. You won't need a reserve as long as you're taking care of the customers, running an above board business, and making sure you have the proper protective measures in place like Verify and Ethica to keep your account safe the best you can. Hopefully this information helps uh, apply some of this to what you're doing now if uh, you think it might help your account or if you're starting to get chargebacks. As always, feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns, comment below anything you're interested in knowing more about, or if you have something to add to this video, please comment any advice or tips that others might be interested in as well. I'm Bobby Dietz, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We put out educational videos like this every week and uh, really enjoy the process. If you have something to add or questions to ask, make sure you do that in the comments as well. If you're a brand owner and interested in having some help with your digital marketing campaigns, feel free to reach out. We work with uh, accounts all the time doing audits to analyze the performance of their account, tell, tell them what's good, what's bad, and what could be better. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.